Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you're here today. Um, today I am hopping on with, obviously, some rabbit talk. Um, this is, we're going to address a question that I get quite often. Um, a lot of my videos do come from questions that I get asked. Um, and you're going to hear Willow in the background. I put her in Maggie away because I have not one, but two bunnies on my lap today. Um, but this is a question that I get asked a lot. Um, and I wanted to address it. This probably isn't going to be a long video because it's kind of a two part um, video that I'm going to end up doing here. But the question I get a lot is how do you raise um, or can you raise Angora rabbits out on colony? So for those of you who don't know, if you were to colony colony raise rabbits um, that is where they're in the outdoors in some way shape or form um, they are not in cages at all and um, that is what these two girls are um, they I, I will try to link uh, the videos of my colony up here um, I don't want to go too deep into how I'm doing my colony because I want to do a, a one-year update on that and that's coming up here soon um, these girls have been out on Colony since um, end of April, beginning of May. I have to look at the dates, but it's been almost a year. Um, they are French Angor rabbits. This is Nutmeg. She is a chestnut French. And this is Min. Um, and she is a tipped ruby eyed white, red eyed white. Um, and I wanted to talk about mainly how their coats do out on colony um, when they're outside and shockingly enough um, again it's been almost a year we've had we've gone through mud season a little bit of mud season not a lot in May but a little bit um, we've gone through summer we've gone through um, fall and so we're talking rains here in Michigan um, and we've had a couple of big snowstorms in January. And so they have been through all of that and they are doing really well. Um, I, again, I'm not gonna go into depth on how it's set up right now because I wanna do that in a separate video. I have a couple theories as to why they're doing so well um, and how our setup is. Um, as you can see, first off, now I did, I am a little out of breath because <laughs> this one here, I had to chase her down a little bit out in the colony. Um, and she is, unfortunately, she's a screamer. Um, for those of you who don't know, rabbits that um, they have a, I guess, a defense mechanism. They will scream if they think they're being hunted down or chased or whatever. And she did a little bit of that for me today, but she's fine. Now, as you can see, they're both sitting here on my lap. Um, I am just holding them on my lap. I'm not holding them down. So are they wild being out in a, an outdoor large area most of the time? No, although I did have to give her a little bit of a chase. Um, what happens is, and I have a, I think it's a short that I've done or a reel, where at nighttime I just go out there and I kind of round around them and they both run right into their omelet hutch. Um, that is one of the, the tools that I have. They have um, an omelet hutch, that's the brand name, and I love them. Um, I actually, they just had a big beginning of the year sale. I purchased a second one, so I'm getting ready to change up the colony a little bit. I'm getting ready to add two new French Angoras out there. So that video is coming up also. But what I wanted to talk about was their fiber and dirt um, and mats, essentially. So these are French Angoras. French Angoras are a little bit easier to care for than English. Um, they have more guard hairs. And um, these two both were groomed last week in my rampage of grooming all my reps last week. They both got done. So they don't have a ton of, I'm not getting much fiber off from them because they were groomed well. When we're talking about grooming on a rabbit for spinning purposes, um, a majority of what I'm going to use is this top side back here. Um, maybe a little bit of the sides. I don't use underbelly for the most part, although you could. Um, 
and it depends on who you talk to. Uh, it depends on what it looks like and um, length, mats, things like that. But for the most part, for my purposes, I'm gonna use this top section of the, the rabbits. Um, you can use the bottom section for felting. I've done a couple felting videos recently. It'd be perfect for that. But so this is what I'm concerned with more than anything. Something I have noticed is that you would think with these guys being outside all the time, they do dig sometimes. Um, right now I'm in a, not right now because the ground is mainly frozen. They are digging a little bit right now, but it is frozen right now. I am in a catch and refill the hole in right now. Um, I, I have some ideas on how to fix that this spring and we'll be doing that, but that's for the other video. Um, and so you would think that these girls would be dirty. They are not dirty. Um, you would think that they would have matted feet and underbelly. As you can see, they are in really, really good shape. Um, there are no mats. There's no dirt. There's no poo. There's no nothing. And she's in a colony situation 24 seven. Um, the omelet hutch sits on the ground. There is a it's all enclosed. It does have a bottom to it that can easily be cleaned out. I put hay in there for them. Um, so they're not dirty at all. They're not matted at all. I don't know, and I'm debating on this right now. I don't know if I'd put English out there. Um, English have a finer fiber that tends to mat more quickly. Um, and I don't know, but I didn't know how well these girls would do out there either. I would have thought at least they would be dirty and matty. And again, they're digging out there some days. Some days I catch them with big holes. So um, it's not like they're staying. I do have pea stone down in some areas um, and that kind of dissuades them from digging, but they still dig some. And so they are both, let me pull her out, see if she's still mad at me. Um, you can tell she's a white. They really don't have, they have, she has a couple of mats inside here. She's got one right here that I could clip out easily. But this is the fiber that typically when you have a rabbit, this is the stuff that's so hard to manage, especially if you're going to show, this is just a pine, it's just sitting on her fiber. Um, especially if you're gonna show your rabbits, um, you wanna make sure that you are doing a good job of um, getting all the mats out, uh, keeping their legs clean, their belly clean, all of that. I don't gravitate towards that too much um, because again, I am not a show person, I am a fiber person. So I'm more concerned about this up here. But for the most part, I think um, I am able to keep these girls cleaner than any of my cage rabbits right now. And I think it is, the only thing I can come up with is that they are out um, in the elements, in the wind, whatever they're in a large area i'm trying to think of how big i am not good with visualizing dimensions their um their area is as wide as a small two-car garage um and probably 15 feet um this way maybe 20 feet lengthwise so they have a really nice area to run in and I think as their fiber, because ingors are always shedding some fiber to some degree. Um, even the ones that I have just groomed are still going to have some fiber coming out. Um, even when you shear them right down, you're going to have some fiber coming out. And so um, I think it's the being outside, being able when, <clears throat> when the coat, when any of it comes off, even if it's just bits and pieces after being groomed, um, I think it's just blowing away in the wind. It's not getting caught up on them. It's not caught up on a cage, um, if that makes sense. Sorry, I got a piece caught in my mouth. Um, the struggles with having fiber animals. But I think that's why they are staying so nice is that the, the wind and whatever, it just takes it and it, they're not, it's not staying in the cage. It's not getting caught up on anything. And so um, they have beautiful fiber. Now, 
again, you can see, well, maybe more on her. She's not really dirty, and she was digging yesterday. I had to stop her. You can see the bottom of her pads and stuff are a little bit dirty, but her fiber, um, for the most part, she's angry with me. <laughs> for the most part, her fiber is clean, um, and anything that I would use is clean. Um, so, yeah, it's... I wanted you guys to see this. I wanted to talk about it a little bit, and I think it's just because they're out in the elements and they aren't collecting. Um, like I clean my cages every day. I pull out any unused hay. Um, I have a brush that I scrape fiber off from the the bottom, or even some of the sides. Sometimes will get it caught up. But if you've ever been in a, especially a angora rabbit tree or a barn where a bunch of angoras are, there is always fiber flying around. And I think with them being outside, they just don't have that. Um, so that's what they're looking like. Um, and I am, like I said, I have, I purchased another omelet hutch last week during the sale. I am getting ready to put that together and put two more French Angoras in with them. Um, I will probably do that Thursday because I wanna be able to monitor them to make sure they do okay. Um, together again um, these two have lived together since they were little they're sisters and the two I have are actually in a uh, I never know what to call them they're they're puppy play pens essentially is what they are they're on my cement floor in my garage or my barn where I keep my rabbits these two other ones that I'm getting ready to put in have been living together for over a year in one of those so they're doing well together it's just a matter of bringing the four of them together without any issues um, so I think I'm going to do that Thursday. We're supposed to have almost 60 degrees here in Michigan, which is crazy. Um, and then I'll be able to uh, kind of sit out there, hang out there, and make sure they do all right. I'm not expecting any problems with that much space, but we'll see. Um, I may have to adjust what I'm doing, but I have a couple of other ideas for that too. So I hope this answers any questions. I hope you guys are able to see on the video I know it's not in person but if you guys can see how clean <laughs> she's like stop doing that how clean she is um, she is not matted at all neither one of them are and a lot of times where you're gonna get the mats is right down here along um, the edge of their body where their feet are and things and she just doesn't have any at all so they are both doing well so the answer to that question can I colony raise Angoras I would say the answer is yes um, I would absolutely try it see what works for you again I'll try to clink link a couple of videos up above here um, of my colony as it started and where it stands prior to right now and then um, keep an eye out on that video I'm gonna try to do it probably in April or um, May for a one year anniversary and show you I am gonna change a couple things on that but not much um, and I think it's something that anyone is able to be able to do in their area it might um, it might be that you need to add a couple things to your area that you have but um, again it's it's been very easy to do and I would like to get more of them onto colony as I move forward with this journey um, it just it makes everything a little bit easier so <laughs> I thought that was my hair. It's not my hair, it's hers. Um, I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. I hope you're able to create something today. Please like this video, and if you don't already, please subscribe to my channel. I try to post twice a week right now um, and give you updates and um, ideas and things like that. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye.